Are you kidding me? Hi, I'm Peter. And I'm Carol. In 2016, we sold almost everything we own, and we took our three teenage kids on an epic family road trip around North America and the world. We knew we could always make more money, but we could never get back time. As a family, we valued time more than money and experiences more than things. Along the way, our kids grew up into awesome young adults while developing the entrepreneurial skills and life experiences that have set them on their own adventurous paths. In our new chapter as Empty Nesters, our adventure continues both off the grid at our cabin in the wilderness and on the road exploring distant places in our well-equipped expedition truck. Good morning from this beautiful camp spot with a massive view overlooking the ocean. The, the weather has been amazing. We're just enjoying our time here immensely. And then we're heading back east a little bit to uh, pick up some packages, say bye to the family, and we'll probably start heading north. at McPhillips Beach. It's the part just over the, the big dune that you're allowed to still drive vehicles on. And it is just gorgeous. Getting your vehicle level on the beach is the easiest thing in the world. Either you build up one side or what we just did is we just dug down a little bit on the other side, just in front of the tires, and then just drove into it, and it's perfectly level. I'm gonna get some chairs set up. These are the chairs we picked up at Equipped in Utah, and a bunch of you have been asking us about them. They're called K9 chairs. What we love most about them, the ease of setup. That's it, and you put them away. on the beach, beautiful weather, just nice relaxing time. It's busier than we've ever seen it, but it is the 5th of July, so everybody's kind of off for the rest of the week, I'd imagine, so it's nice to see all the families enjoying such a beautiful place. We stopped in briefly at my sister's place, the Crowley House Flower Farm pick up some things my mother left me and to say see you later to friends and family. Before beginning our journey north,
found a wonderful camp spot here. It's a, it's a, a paid campground, but it's just uh, wide open and it's right on the, on the ocean here. And the first thing we saw was a bunch of gray whales. And they're literally just where the surf is breaking, so very, very close to shore. So we get to see their fins and see them blowing, uh, breathing, and it's just really cool. I think it's a, co a couple of larger whales and then a, a calf. At least one calf. You see a very small dorsal fin and two huge ones. That's a fun, uh, super fun thing for us to experience here on the coast of Washington. We're right near the uh, Olympic National Park, just outside of there. So tomorrow we'll probably be heading through there on our way up to Port Angeles. So this is completely wild shoreline as far as the eye can see down there but they've carved off a little spot up here for a bunch of uh, campers and motorhomes and whatnot and that's where we're parked it gives really nice access to the ocean Morning guys, we're here in Washington on what's called the South Beach Campground, you can see it in the background. Uh, apparently there's no dispersed camping along the ocean, so the best way to experience it is to go to a little campground like this. There's a few of them, most of them are in the park, which we're going to be going through today, and those you have to book in advance. But we just drove yesterday up I-5, we kind of uh, just wanted to get some ground under us, so we went from Oregon up here on I-5, came driving in around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon and there was uh, at least five sites available. It turned out to be an amazing, amazing place. We watched a beautiful sunset last night, went for a walk on the beach, saw some whales. So we've really enjoyed this place. It's, uh, it's one of those places I think we could spend a week just beach combing. But uh, we are trying to get to Canada so we're going to head up to the ferry in Port Angeles. It's about two hours drive from here and uh, take the ferry across to Vancouver Island. So it's gonna be a fun trip and we're gonna take you with us.
waiting for the five o'clock ferry, so we thought we'd come and get something to eat. There's a little place called Fish and Crab or Crab Shack or something like that, right on the water. It's beautiful. So we're gonna have some fish and some crab and some coleslaw. Shrimp. And shrimp, lots of shrimp. So we camped at South Beach here, and then we went up the highway, up through Forks, all the way around here. Port Angeles. Now we're going to try to get to BC. So close. It's so it's far so away. Far away. Beautiful. Vancouver Island and we're heading north uh, back to a place we've been before just to kind of get set up hopefully there will be a camp spot available there it's in the big trees right on the ocean so yeah we're about a half an hour drive from there and uh, we'll see you when we get there so we were very fortunate uh, we pulled into this place and, it, and it, the sign said camp full but I thought I, there's no harm in asking see if someone canceled last minute or something and uh, sure enough she had a site that they keep reserved just in case for for these type of situations and uh, she said she holds on to it till around 10 o'clock so it's 9 45 she gave it to us sold it to us so we're super thankful we have a spot for tonight so we can get settled here in Canada and tomorrow we're gonna carry on all right we're all set up uh, it's been a long day we've come a long way and the ferry and the border crossing and all that stuff so we're just gonna get an early night and uh, probably not even make food we'll maybe make a quick snack and then hit the hay and we'll see you guys tomorrow morning good morning we had a quiet sleep here last night and actually slept in a little bit after all that traveling and crossing the ferry and everything we just needed to uh, get caught up but uh, we're in the beautiful Rath Trevor Beach Provincial Park here in BC and if you ever get a chance to come it's got massive trees which we're gonna see in a minute we're gonna go for a walk it's also right on the beach so um, just a beautiful place but I was thinking you know for our American family and friends to travel in Canada with you with the exchange rate the way it is it's um, a lot cheaper for you when we're in the States and we see $30 for a camp spot you know for to do that we actually have to do a conversion in our head. $30 US is $40 Canadian. So everything's a lot more expensive. But if you come here, a $30 night is only $21. So uh, something to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, we are going to go on our walk and then we're going to head to the store and fill up the fridge with some 
important uh, food and we're gonna fill up with water before we leave the park here and then we're heading uh, out into the wilderness we're gonna get some maps and spend some time today actually pouring over the maps in onyx going over the route which is called the trans canada adventure trail we're both excited and a little bit nervous about doing it because it was designed for motorcycles so we know there's going to be spots that we need to make workarounds for uh, traveling in a truck but it's going to be exciting it's going to be fun and we're going to see a lot of beautiful country together stay tuned as we take you on a backcountry adventure coast to coast across canada $258. Wow, ouch. I forgot how expensive fuel was here in Canada. Alright guys, so as you know, we have made it into Canada. We're super excited because we are beginning what we're calling the Great Canadian Overland Adventure. It's an epic adventure all the way from the northwest of Vancouver Island on the Pacific Ocean all through the island all through each of the provinces for a couple of months at least three months i think it maybe even take longer we're going to be working our way all the way to the east coast on the island of newfoundland and uh, that is an incredibly long journey uh, especially when we're doing so much back country there's we've done that tri trip you know before but mostly traveling on the trans canada highway now we're taking the, parts of the Trans Canada Adventure Trail, which is a backcountry trail. So because of time constraints and also places we want to see, we're, we're straying from that exact trail. So for this trip, we're using the Onyx Off-Road Mapping System, which is a really good app that we have on our phones, but also can project onto our screen here in the truck. And uh, that allows us to do a couple of things. One, we were able to download the GPX files uh, for the entire Trans Canada Adventure Trail, which is 9,800 miles or 15,600 kilometers. It's, a, it's an incredibly long trail that winds through all the backcountry. And what we're doing is going on and off that trail. Sometimes we'll jump on the highway and make up ground and then get to the places we want to see. Sometimes we'll just stray completely from the, the trail and go to see a village that we want to see or a site that we that isn't on that map. But that's gonna be our journey, going from the west coast all the way to the east coast, doing as much backcountry as we can. And the thing about the app is, first of all, you can download files and display them on the map, and that gives you all kinds of ideas of places to go, because most of the places we're going, we've never been, so we're just in uncharted territory. But the map gives you some confidence and gives you some information. Also along the way, people have left routes that they've done with all, you know, really good information about the trail. Is it doable with a truck or is it only for smaller vehicles? You know, they'll give a rating out of 10 on how difficult the road is. So that's been a huge bonus with the app. Another one that we've already used uh, because it's uh, forest fire season and we're in uh, British Columbia, which tend to this time of year get, uh, get some forest fires. Um, Onyx Off-Road displays on the map all those, any active forest fire, whether they're out, under control, or out of control, and exactly where they are. So that's something you really can't do without, you know, if you're camping in the backcountry. Just the other day, we were going through some, some smoky areas, and we were able to look on Onyx and see that the fire was actually quite, quite a distance away from us, and the smoke was just blowing in with the wind. So that gave us the confidence to keep going. But without that information, it's a guessing game. And then lastly, what we're doing with the, uh, the Onyx Off-Road app is we're tracking our entire journey. Um, so it's leaving a breadcrumb trail all across the country. And then at night when we stop and we find a camp that we like, we can add a waypoint and that saves it forever. And we can put some notes on there about the spot. That way we can share it with other people or use it again if we're ever back in this neck of the woods. 
So get a copy of Onyx Off-Road. If you're planning on exploring and you want to prepare for your trip or you're out there exploring, you should check it out. We'll put a link below and also you can use uh, the discount code EFRT and uh, get yourself a discount on the app. So it's one of the most handy tools for doing what we're doing. So let's carry on on the Great Canadian Overland Adventure. Well, it's a pretty spot, it quiet. Sure is, yeah. That's what they said on the map. And then there's the elk, the small elk creek right here that you walk to. Okay. So it has a pet toilet and then trails going to the creek. Really pretty. Should we check out the other one and see if it has more clearing for the Starlink? Yeah, this is pretty, but if it's not far up the road, we might as well check it out. Wow. Fly fishing paradise. Where do you want to camp? There's yeah, like there is a lot, isn't there? This is perfect. I'm I'll so back up here glad. And then we can just yeah, but look at that spot over yeah. there. We can oh. walk around and decide there's a lot. Wow guys, look at this. Ooh, I like this spot actually. Yeah. Look at the view. Let's get out. So th we talked about um, provincial parks yesterday and, and they're incredible when you're in a town, but now we're getting way up into the wilderness. And you, if you're lucky, you find places like this right by a river and the price is free, which is good in both American and Canadian. Right? Right. <laughs> oh, I love this spot. Should we turn it around to face the river? You want to do that really fast? Oh my word. This is heaven. <laughs> wow. Ta-da. I'm going to buy my fishing license for BC. <laughs> this is amazing. Our door will open up to this. Went into you. Yeah. Oh dear lord. That's bad. Oh. I hope it's not too rusty. When is my last tetanus shot? Oh, I think Haiti. No. Really? Yeah, that was a. Uh, Let's get some. Uh... Oh. I'm gonna Here, let me get you a chair and I'll get you, the, I'll get the medic bag. Let's just get you sit down. So, I just read up a bit on you know what to do if you step on a nail in the wilderness and in general you're supposed to if you're nearby you're supposed to have a doc look at it pretty much all they'll do is give you an updated tetanus shot I don't know it's probably been over five years since I've had mine but they say when to seek medical attention if the puncture wound is deep so I found the nail this is it and I can look back on the video but I'm pretty sure it was sticking out about that much of the bend. That's how I could see it was a nail bent. And then it went through the, the flip-flop in the thin part here. So if I measure it up, it looks like, you know, only about that much went into my foot. So I wouldn't call that too a, a very deep puncture wound. It's a, a fairly shallow puncture wound. So that, is all good news. Um, it is rusty, but they say you don't get tetanus from rust. You get it from 
uh, dirty contamination and if, it, if the nail was lying in even decomposing leaves you can get it from that but it was laying out in the gravel here in the bright sun I doubt it, it's dirty I don't think a lot of people have camped here looks like it's used in the fall for hunting but not so much this time of year so I'm pretty confident that the nail is not dirty in terms of you know that kind of stuff bacteria it was dry so all of that gives me hope that I can just disinfect it so I'm going to use um, hydrogen peroxide I've already put some on immediately Carol brought it out quickly and a bit of uh, iodine and then I'll, I'll let that soak in and then I'll put a bandage with some polysporin overnight just to keep it hopefully from getting infected They say if you start getting a fever and things like that, then you know you, you, that it's possibly getting infected, but I think I'll be fine. That's where the nil went in. I'll get you a paper towel. Love this first aid like bag from Fieldcraft Survival. You just clip it on right here and it's just easy. It can turn into a backpack. So we have stuff like if we have to hike in or even Lando, but Lando's bag is right there. So it's uh, really easy. I can just tear it off and it has all his um, dog first aid kit. I, I place his here because um, then it's just easy access if he were to get hurt while running, which has happened before. Anyways, always good to have first aid.
So we met the folks from Guzzle H2O at uh, Expo PNW a couple weeks ago and uh, saw a demonstration of their water filtration system. So I think this thing's going to be a game changer for us. Um, one of our most difficult tasks was trying to find fresh water in the various towns as we're going through. And sometimes you have to pay for it, it's quite expensive. Um, and you just never know the quality of the source. So with a Guzzle H2O, you can put that filter in the water. There's a whole filtration system in this box. And all you do is turn it on. It's, it's battery, rechargeable battery operated. So you get pure drinking water coming out of this side. The cool thing about this is it has a 30 foot hose. So you can run it from directly from the river up to the truck. So they say it'd take about 40 minutes, 45 minutes to fill 30 gallons, maybe an hour, but that's something we're gonna do. We park by a river, hook this up, just start filling it. And we'll have unlimited source of pure drinking water. So we're really excited about the Guzzle H2O. Are you kidding me? Those people just left. What happened? But why Why was it like that? I think because I was charging the, uh, a bunch of things off of here last night. Oh, the H2O. Those people literally just, just pulled left. out. Yeah. Is there any switch that you can go to another battery like a Vandy? That's a good question. Um, we have power in the back, but there's no way the cables would reach. Wow. I haven't heard a car all morning. You know, we should probably carry a, 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 a battery charger we could plug into the back. Right. Wow. I can't believe those people literally. Like, I. I mean, I wish I had a bike. I could race. That's why we need to carry a bike. Oh. Wow. Something we never thought about. Now we are thinking about it. And it's something we're going to have to figure out. Do you want me to stand at the end of the road? There might be one or two, hopefully. Otherwise, um... I yeah. haven't seen any yet. But there has been a white truck pass yesterday. We might be working here today until someone comes in, if they do. Um, stay tuned, we'll let you know how it goes. So it's about four kilometers to where we are from off the highway. We'll see if someone comes down today. So the one time you're out camping, you really want someone to come by. So far, nothing. Of course, we picked the most remote place, like down the top. Rooney Lake, Maine. This whole thing would be Rooney Lake, Maine, I guess. We need like an electric bike or a dirt bike. But this is Rooney Lake, I don't know. Yeah. We need a few things. I ran all the way from the truck thinking there was a car, but it was an airplane. Well, at least I got my sprint in. We're in, like, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Because we were thinking to stay and just edit today. And those people that were next to us was in the spot that I wanted to fish. Because it's where two rivers meet. But, uh, I just hope someone comes this evening for a camp spot. I mean, we're remote, but not that remote and we're talking about we have a bug out solar panel beautiful 
solar panel and it's at the lake, not in the truck. That would be good to carry. We've had to use it before with the Jeeps where we killed both batteries, but uh, oh well, we've learned a lesson. On to go fishing. I keep on thinking I'm hearing something. But it's nothing. Well, I'm gonna put together my rod and just relax. Go fishing. We would have made it to the top. We were only about uh, two hours and 45 minutes to where the start of the trail is, but uh, that's tomorrow or maybe later this afternoon. One thing we have learned over the years of uh, overlanding and traveling with our kids is plans change probably five times and to be flexible. We've been getting texts from Caroline and uh, she's trying on dresses again. She hasn't, and she found one. So Pete and I were just over the moon, elated, pretty emotional, seeing her face just so lit up and happy. Um, it was really special because otherwise we would have been on the road driving with no service for the next, you know, three, three hours or so. So that was really special and we were happy about that, that we could be, be there with her. Man, I have like, unless I'm hearing things. Anyways, I, Pete and I were just talking that, um, it's not like we're in a rush to get there. I mean, I was pretty excited, but sometimes things like this happen and makes you slow down and just soak in the day. Hopefully not days, but today would be nice. Um, so yeah, like what I was telling you guys earlier, I'll just continue fishing and getting texts from Caroline. And the boy said that they're having just thunderstorm after thunderstorm. Like they barely get two days of sun. And I think our whole trip, we haven't even had rain. So I don't know if it's been two months or so on the road so far. But um, so that's unfortunate because Pete Jr. is leaving on another expedition with that um, X Overland. And he was really hoping because he missed all last summer when he was away filming. Um, and then this summer he was hoping for some sunshine, but, uh, so far they ha just cannot get good weather. Um, but you know what? It's almost, it seems like July 19th on at the lake is just perfect after that. And then it's like sun all the way through October. So I'm going to wait about two minutes, then I'm just going to go fish. So Carol's out fishing, but uh, thankfully a truck pulled in and uh, some folks with their dogs were going to go swimming in the river. It's such a beautiful day. Uh, they're locals and uh, they boosted us. We're back in business. Um, so we're just going to let that run and charge up, but it, it illustrates something missing in our, our kit here. What we definitely need is either one of those booster packs that we can charge from the back or um, even a trickle charger or yeah maybe a charger because we have lots of power in the back of the truck in the cab and the solar's going all our batteries are at 100 percent there just if we ever needed uh, to boost ourselves i think one of those packs would be probably the best bet but thankful for those folks they took care of us and we're back in business but uh, we're just gonna hang out here today because 
It's such a beautiful day. I'm editing back here. Carol's fishing. And uh, there's no downside to staying here by this gorgeous river. <laughs>